Okay, so like a one cam, two cam, three cam, third cam ROM lenses, what's the difference? The cam is the um, is a lifting device, and it's 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 a mechanical linkage between the lens and the camera. When the first Leica Flex was introduced, this was the first um, reflex Leica in the in the early early 1960s. They only needed a, a single cam to communicate the information between the lens and the camera. As the cameras were improved, as more functionality was added to the cameras, they needed more communication. So they added the second cam and the third cam. And then when we when the R8 and R9 elect, electronic cameras were introduced, they needed more information still, and that was when the ROM, the electronic context, were introduced. So and this is the Leica Flex. This was introduced in the early 1960s. This needs one cam to work fully with the meter. And if you look on the lens here, you can see there's um, there's a metal silver sloping piece just there. There's a metal silver sloping piece just there. That's cam one and cam two. With the Leica Flex, the early Leica Flex, you only had the first cam. With the first cam on the Leica Flex, everything works. TTM, well, it's not actually TTM metering on this, but the meter, the, the metering works, and the um, the aperture information passes from the camera to the lens for the metering. So with the Leica Flex, you only needed a single cam. When the Leica Flex SL and SL2 were introduced, at the same time they introduced a second cam. So you have one cam and a second silver cam opposite. Just there and just there. That's a two cam lens. They were introduced for the SL and SL2 series cameras. And if we fast forward to the mid 1970s with the R3, you needed three cam lenses. And the third cam is a bit more difficult to see, but I'll just put an image so you to, to highlight it. There's a little metal, black metal stepped cam inside one of the um, of the sloping metal cams. You can see it when you, when, you, when, you, when you look carefully, it's not that difficult to spot. That's the third cam. So. Quickly summarise, with the earliest Leicaflex cameras, you needed one cam. With the Leicaflex SL and SL2 cameras that were manufactured up until the mid 1970s, you needed two cam. When the R3 came out, you needed three cam. So from the R3, R4, R5, R6, R7s, they all needed three cam lenses. And that's generally these sort of slightly more modern looking lenses where you've got the focal length in yellow there, but that's a 50. I've got a 90 again, you've got the yellow 90 there, slightly more modern looking. And what's this here? This is a 180 Apo Telets. That's a three cam lens as well. Slightly more, more modern looking with the yellow 180. Generally speaking, there'll be, there'll be three cam lenses. And if you see, if you look on the back of that one again, you've got the two metal sloping cams. This one's actually quite easy to spot with the metal stepped cam just on the inside there. So they're three cam lenses. Now, as I said, they, they work fully with all the cameras up to the R7. They're also backwardly compatible all the way to the first Leica, Leica Flex, because this needs the one cam, that has the one cam, the SLSL2 needs two cams, this has two cams, and the R3 through to R7 needs the stepped third cam. That's the third cam too. So the three cam lenses are compatible with pretty much all of the cameras up until the R7. What Leica did do, now this is what confuses me, what Leica did do in their mid 1980s to cut costs was to drop cam one and two. So they, 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 they just got rid of the two metal sloping cams and they just you were just left with the third stepped black cam. That was fine if you use the R3 through to the R7 because you only need that third cam. But third cam lenses won't be compatible with the SL, SL2 or Leica Flex cameras. So, um, now, Leica, Leica were great for, for many years. They were producing three cam lenses that were backward, backwardly compatible by two or even three decades. Uh, they then cut costs, third cam lenses only, so they didn't work on these very early Leica flexes. After the Leica R7, we had the Leica R8. Um, the Leica R8 and R9 cameras, fantastic cameras, much more heavily reliant upon electronics, and they needed the ROM lenses. Now the ROM lenses have a, a row of, of gold contacts just on the lens here. If you, if you look at the back, you can't possibly properly miss it. It's, it's just a row of gold contacts, just like you get on most Nikon and Canon and modern lenses. That communicated the, um, the focal length information to the camera. Um, Ideally, if you're using an R8 or an R9, you want the ROM lenses. 
But if you see three cam lenses or third cam lenses, they do still work perfectly well on the R8 and R9 cameras. You just lose a little bit of functionality predominantly relating to the, uh, the focal length being uh, transmitted to the camera. So if you've got an R R8 or R9, have a look at the three cam lenses. They're definitely worth considering. So that takes us through to the modern day and using these old cameras from the 80s, 90s, 60s and 70s on mirrorless cameras. Now, it's a really, really good system. Putting some of these onto modern cameras gives really good results and they're beautiful, beautiful lenses to handle. If you want a manual focus lens, this is about as good as it gets. Um, generally speaking, when you mount these onto a mirrorless camera, um, there's no communication between the lens and the camera. So with most adapters, you can put any Leica reflex lens on, doesn't matter if it's one cam, two cam, three cam, or third cam or ROM, you can put most lenses onto a mirrorless camera and they'll work perfectly without any issues whatsoever. The only, the only one thing to be aware of is that if you're using a, a Leica Flex SL2 or you're using uh, a Leica Flex SL3, or you're using a later digital Leica rangefinder camera, then the, the adapters do actually recognize the ROM contacts. So for example, if you're putting a, um, this is a non-ROM lens, no electronic contacts. If you put this onto an SL2 with, uh, with a non-Leica adapter, it works perfectly. You just have to tell the camera which, which lens you've got fitted. If you put this lens onto um, an SL2 or an SL3 with a, Leica adapter, the information from the, the, the ROM contacts will be transferred through to the camera. Now that can be useful. It transfers the focal length information across. One important thing about that with cameras like the SL2 and SL3 is the image stabilization. For the image stabilization to work correctly, it does need to know what lens is fitted. So if you're using ROM lenses with the correct Leica adapter on an SL2 or an SL3 or an SL, of course, um, the camera will automatically know which lens is mounted, so it will adjust the, uh, the IBIS accordingly. If you're using a non-ROM lens, not the end of the world, but you just need to enter the, the information on the camera directly. Um, it's, it's a relatively straightforward uh, system. I'm, I'm, I'm making this sound a lot more complicated than it is. But all you've got to basically remember is the vast majority of these can be used on mirrorless cameras without a problem. Um, and you, you may as well just go with the normal dumb, the normal dumb adapter. Most of them, the, the better made ones are absolutely fine. If you do have a Leica SL2 or SL3, um, then consider the Leica adapter because you do get a little bit more functionality with the ROM lenses if you have them. I hope that's been clear. Um, if you have any questions, please come back to me and I'll do my best to, to answer them when I can. Otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.